Notre Dame, six and a half point favorite at Louisville, 730 Eastern. ABC, we said at the top of the show, man, but God bless Notre Dame now. They just have been, they've had zero breaks have the fighting Irish. And I don't mean breaks in the sense of things going their way. I mean breaks in the sense of week after week, it is a formidable opponent after formidable opponent. Their college football playoff hopes are very much still intact. In my mind, do they need some help? Maybe, but this game could be what helps them. Louisville is ranked. So to recap it, Notre Dame played Ohio State, lost on the final play. Just emotionally draining game. You play Duke the next week at Duke. College game day is there. Ken Jong's picking games. It's electric. Probably the biggest game in Duke football history, or at least of the modern era under Mike Elko. Okay? So you had that on your plate. That one more or less came down to the final play with Riley Leonard, who also, by the way, is probably going to be an NFL quarterback here and picked pretty high in the NFL draft, according to people that know about the NFL draft. So that's that. It's been a gauntlet for them. This is going to be a tough task going on the road, but in some ways it's a blessing in disguise in the sense that you have a ranked opponent here. So you're looking at that resume for Notre Dame. If you, I mean, you beat Duke last week. If you win this game, another ranked win on the docket, you still got USC, you still got Clemson. You're rooting for both those teams to kind of trend the right way so they're as highly ranked as possible when you get them so you can help your college football playoff chances. But I'm just saying, they have, they've been through the gauntlet. This is another game for them to try and make a case for their college football playoff hopes. Now for Louisville, talked about Oklahoma being very quietly ranked. How about the Brom squad, man? They're undefeated as well. And if you want to make a statement, if you're Louisville, I got a good friend of mine that's a big fan of the program, that's a big fan of the cards. And Sam, if you're watching, shout out Sam. He's like, hey man, show some love to the cards, man. We're undefeated. The boys are rolling. Why don't you give some love to the boys in Louisville? And I'm like, hey, we, we, we got to see something that's statement worthy for us to talk about them. I'm going to make a statement. How about you go beat Notre Dame? Go beat one of the top teams in the country. Go beat a team with, I think, one of the top quarterbacks in the country that isn't getting enough love. Big statement game for Louisville if they can get it done at the crib, no less. You wonder if Jack Carlo is going to be there. I don't know. We'll see. Can the cards match the physicality of Notre Dame? It's a simple question. The answer may or may not be simple when it comes to Saturday night, but like Notre Dame's game plan isn't a secret. Right? I mean, you, you could turn on Notre Dame for all of like 15 minutes and understand, oh, this team wants to bully you. <laughs> Oh, they have Audric Estime, who is a grown man running the football. They want to get downhill. They want to play smash mouth football. They want to line up with double tight ends and just make you say uncle. It's easy to say that's what they're going to do. It's a whole nother thing to stop it. Because you got to have one, the want to, two, the stamina, and three, the physicality to actually do it from a personnel standpoint. So if they can't do it, like that's kind of the game right there, right? If you can't stop Notre Dame's plan A, what are we even talking about here? Notre Dame's going to roll. Now, if you can, if you can take away plan A, Sam Hartman is still something you have to deal with if you're Louisville, but you, you force it back to what we talk about a lot around here. Teams want to make these Notre Dame pass catchers prove they can beat them consistently. Okay, Jaden Greathouse, at the time of us being live, I don't know if he'll be playing in this game or not. I just haven't heard anything, to be honest with y'all. I know he tried to give it a go last week, wasn't able to. But the subplot... Big subplot show for y'all during the prediction season. The subplot here is how do you deal with Mitchell Evans if you're Louisville? Because the thing now with Notre Dame that they've kind of started to show more and more the last couple of games, when they line up with multiple tight ends on the field, as a defense, that screams, we're running the football at y'all. We got two more big boys out here. Along with our offensive line, we're running the football. Get ready. But when you have someone like Mitchell Evans who can also be a tremendous threat in the pass game. He's all of like six foot five, 250, 260 pounds. Well, then you can't just sell out to stop the run. Because if you do, Mitchell Evans is saying, hey, ball blazer, hey, I'm open. Put it up where the kids can't get it. I'm going to catch it. And like that was kind of what he was able to do these last couple of games against Ohio State and against Duke. He popped in a very real way. So for Louisville, it'll kind of be twofold of, okay, can you stop the run? Can you sell out to stop the run? Throw the kitchen sink at the boys, but also find a way to combat what they're going to do with Mitchell Evans in the pass game. Because I think that's the one that scares you the most. Yes, they've got some good receivers as well that you got to worry about, but Mitchell Evans is the one that I think could really be tricky to defend if you're Louisville. Now, the other question I have in this game is, can Jack Plummer and Louisville, can they put pressure on Notre Dame to score points? 
because I think this Notre Dame offense has shown what they are on multiple occasions, and that's a really good offense, a really efficient offense with Sam Hartman playing quarterback. They're gritty. This team's got a tremendous response mechanism. We talk about a lot on this show, but I think at the same time, like for Louisville, this is the game where you empty the clip. If you got a trick play, run it. We got a personnel we haven't shown yet, put them out there. We got a deep pass play we haven't dialed up yet, uncork it. Like this is the game where you leave nothing in the chamber. And we haven't seen Notre Dame have to go into like legitimate chase mode. We've seen them have to play from behind. We've seen them have to find a way to scratch and claw and and get back on top in a close football game. We haven't seen it where it's like, hey, we're scoring 35. Are y'all? Also, by the way, we're scoring 35 and y'all have 21 right now. So can you play catch up? I think that they can. But if you're Louisville, you want to find out. You want to find out because this offense... Not that it's not built to still match in that sense and go and score a lot of points, but they are more pro style. They are more, hey, we want to run and then throw. We, hey, we, we want to play smash mouth, hit the deep shot later. They're, they're not a team that's like, hey, spread it out, go five wide, and we'll throw it 60 times. That's not Notre Dame. And that's not a fault on Notre Dame. It's their identity. But I think for Louisville, like, hey, you want to make them try and get that engine to overheat offensively. You want to make them try and chase you. That's a big factor in this game. Now, Notre Dame defensively is going to be aggressive, okay? I don't think they're Oklahoma-level aggressive with just dialing up blitzes left and right, but they are going to be a team that I think does put some pressure on you in that sense. And we talked about it with Oklahoma in our Oklahoma-Texas prediction. Like, it's a thing where being aggressive is only as effective as you're able to get home. Does that make sense? Like, if you're aggressive and you swing and miss... Duke did this a couple of times in their RPO stuff. Like they were able to take advantage of the Notre Dame pressure, get the ball out in space or let Riley Leonard pull it. And like good things were happening for them because they were sort of using the flow of the Notre Dame defense against them. Can Louisville do the same? They're going to have to. They're going to have to, to be able to put pressure on Notre Dame to score points. So we'll see. A lot of that does fall on Notre Dame playing assignment sound which is kind of going back to football 101 I don't want to get too remedial here when it comes to talking about you know the 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 basics of the game but we understand here that's a big big piece for Notre Dame to be able to play sound but also aggressive and if they're not sound Louisville's going to catch them end of the day man now I said at the top of this segment I think we got to ask this question right now the major question for me the emotional and competitive stamina of Notre Dame Notre Dame, on paper, should take care of business against Louisville. That's on paper. They play the game on grass or on turf. I believe no, I believe Louisville's on turf. So that's what it is. The, the two grueling games you've had to this point takes a lot out of you. And at some point in time, like you see the logo, you see it's Louisville. It's not the Duke team you played last week with the buzz of college game day. It's not Ohio State. Like, do we see a little bit of a letdown from Notre Dame? No one would blame them if they did, but you can't let down in this spot because I think Louisville has the roster and I think they have the personnel as a whole that could beat you if you don't bring it. It's not a secret. It's the way that college football works. That's why we watch every single Saturday because there's so much variance, but that's going to be the big question for me. Can they answer the call? Can they have the cool hand in this spot? Again, you're not at South Bend. You're on the road. Can you keep the competitive stamina, the emotional stamina to play your best in this spot? Because if you don't, things will get dicey. Things will get interesting very quickly. Now, my answer to that, in my mind, goes back to Sam Hartman and Marcus Freeman. If you've watched this show, you may even have this tattooed on you. Maybe you have a t-shirt with this. Teams take on the persona of their leadership. And leadership is your quarterback and your head coach. Both those individuals, probably as cool customers as it comes. Like those dudes, 4th and 16, nobody flinch. Sam Hartman, all good in the hood, first down. Run for 17 yards, throw his body forward, no panic. Let's get it done. Find a way to keep this thing rolling. I think how calm he is and how calm Marcus Freeman is kind of resets this team. I think they go into Louisville, and I think that the physicality of Notre Dame ends up being the difference yet again on the offensive line. Audric Estime runs the football. I don't think Louisville will be able to have the answer for that. And if they do try and have the answer for that, I think Notre Dame has enough weapons that are far along enough now in the season to go and make some plays and and to be comfortable doing it. Mitchell Evans, again, I think he will be a factor in this game yet again. And if they pay too much attention to him, then the outside receivers get to eat as well. So final score for me, 
37 for the Irish, 21 for the Cards. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.